Uh, welcome back. So it was a while since the last Q&A. Uh, I thought this one should be interesting for for some of you. Um, I got three questions. Uh, two of them are from uh, Victoria Ack eighty six uh, using skew uh, only on spindle, or you can use it on um, cross grain work, like on the balls. Uh, the second part uh, of the question is five tools that I would use if I only have those tools and uh, finally the wood turners that I follow or recommend on uh, YouTube that is from the other guy uh, question just can't remember uh, <laughs> the name so, sorry about that so just to tell you a little bit of story about these what I'm going to finish now uh, put the oil on um, these are part of the order um, so it's a set with the four uh, chestnut balls that uh, I was doing as well the thin one at least you saw um, the rest of it you'll see in the in the video and uh, these three pieces are also a part of that uh, set for that client so this is rough and inspired uh, cross grain box it is from steamed beach this is a coffee sc scoop uh, uh, pot let's say uh, this is maple this is that same uh, beach uh, this behemoth uh, also uh, maple and the beach steamed the beach uh, base uh, this is this part here is almost 23 centimeters so 230 mil um, tall and uh, it's almost all the way through uh, hollow for a spatula so I'm going to finish this and uh, answer a question now uh, for the finish I'm going to use this uh, tongue oil blend uh, with citron solvent in it it's food safe Uh, since this has that citrus solvent, the natural solvent in it, it likes to evaporate quite quickly as it's thinned down. So I like to saturate the this uh, paper, whatever it's called. And uh, you can see here this lovely detail. Uh, I didn't put any recess here to expand. Uh, I did this part as a uh, a little tenon which I grabbed with my shark jaws and could able to finish the outside so but from the inside you only see as a as a detail okay so the first question is uh, using skew only on a spindle work or can you use it on a cross grain work or uh, do I recommend using it like for finishing cuts or something like that now I extremely like to use skew uh, on spindle work now uh, for cross grain work uh, you could use it as a negative rake scraper so that's basically what negative rake scraper is it has a uh, two bevels on it it has two bevels on it and um, as you can see here so negative rake scraper has a negative uh, bevel let's say on the top as well and um, you can use it like that for a uh, cross grain work I primarily like to use skew for spindle work. Uh, there are some exceptions where I like to use a skew um, for a tiny detail cleaning or uh, finishing, for instance, this corner here inside. Uh, or even better, I like to use it uh, as you see now in this footage, which I'll play uh, how I fitted these two together and uh, how I fine-tuned the mortise and tenon joint with the skew on a cross-grain piece of wood. So I'll play that now.
Using a skew on a cross grain orientation of the wood like we have on bowls, I personally, personally don't use it probably at all. But there are exceptions, uh, for instance, uh, I like it uh, to use it like in this uh, situation, this technique. So this is a mortise for this cup. Uh, this is a coffee scoop uh, cup and this just barely fits in needs another let's say a little less than a quarter of an inch to seed it all, all the way down and uh, what i like to do here instead of taking another heavier bite uh, with a scraper here i like to use skew this side bevel here because it's sharp and you see the wispy shavings that are flying off and I just make a little V here at the entrance so you can see here on the side wall here it's just clean surface and that barely needs sanding and uh, this now fits quite nice so that's the occasion where I use um, skew on a cross grain or if I have to just in a corner maybe uh, slightly scrape then I'll use a skew but I'll raise the burr on the side which is required so okay so as you saw uh, that is my preferred let's say option for using a skew uh, on a cross grain work now there are few wood turners that uh, swear by uh, using skew as it's used on a spindle to use it on a bowls and um, now I don't have a fear of catches with the skew on a spindle work. They are common uh, thing and uh, just have to accept these because even a pro, someone like uh, Steve Jones who uh, has uh, skew in, in his veins, let's say in his blood, uh, he can also get a catch. It's, it's something normal, let's say. Uh, versus if you have a catch on a cross grain work with uh, any of the gouges or uh, scrapers it can be quite uh, scary to say the least or um, even with the skew uh, if you, you're going to use the bevel contact and uh, as it's meant to use on a spindle that could be disaster and uh, I do not recommend using it like that so like I said, you can use it as a negative rake scraper, although uh, somebody did ask me um, what's the difference or at least why I'm not using the negative rake scraper. And uh, I'm actually using negative rake scraper, but that terminology is only uh, due to positioning the standard scraper or uh, the approach. That you present the tool to the wood so um, that way you can achieve negative rig scraper if you lift the handle further up uh, you'll get a negative between the wood that you're scraping and the blade this angle included has to be less than 90 degrees that's negative rig scraper the benefit of using something dedicated with two bevels scraper is that is not grabby uh, it is safer to use let's say and you have a buffer zone um, if you by accident drop a hand a little bit this bevel still uh, saves you a bit versus if you point a standard scraper up into let's say a bowl you'll have a big big catch and it will blow up the bowl so just to be aware of that 
Now, my recommendation for uh, wood turners uh, that are well worth watching and uh, you can learn a tremendous amount of information and uh, correct information to, to be exact uh, on YouTube are uh, first of all obviously uh, Richard Raffin uh, who is my men mentor and uh, you just know when someone uh, did this for 50 years and um, it has so much knowledge in his hands uh, it's well worth watching several times his his videos uh, only because you're, you're only going to learn uh, uh, from him so uh, there is a saying uh, in Croatia uh, that uh, you only run away from old people when they fart so uh, <laughs> it's um, it's like uh, uh, you you stay with them you listen to every word they have to say and absorb the knowledge absorb the the wisdom absorb the um, every little bit of uh, piece of advice they have for you just absorb it try it for yourself and uh, uh, you can't go wrong with with uh, turners like that my next recommendation would be for uh, uh, wood turners to watch on YouTube uh, would be Mike Peace and Sam Angelo. Uh, they are excellent turners. They, uh, that is the reason why I uh, approach uh, with Richard Raffin uh, to them about uh, four ways and uh, um, it's just uh, they have a tremendous uh, tremendous amount of knowledge and uh, they have a lot of uh, library uh, of videos um, on, on YouTube and uh, they've been doing this for a long time and uh, they are well worth watching and what I'm trying to say is there's there is not a single way to do something so uh, that's uh, that that is why I proposed the four-way uh, videos because um, you can see four ways to get the job done uh, correctly, safely and that's the more, most important thing uh, because on YouTube there is tremendous amount of uh, stuff, videos, turners uh, that are turning um, first of all they don't know the basics and the basics I mean the grain orientation, the tools presentation the the correct way to cut something um, because although there are uh, multiple ways to finish the project there are only a few maybe one way um, to properly cut the wood so there are uh, other few wood turners that I really like to watch uh, that have a regular uh, channel and uh, one of them is um, Kerry uh, Corney from Australia. Uh, he has probably the best uh, videography, the best channel I've seen in terms of uh, pure knowledge, of course. But uh, the the videography, the editing, the you know the details, showing the details and everything, just he puts a lot of effort into this and. Uh, you can tell by his videos and uh, by the way all of the uh, my recommendations for uh, wood turners on YouTube there will be a link down below to their channel so if you're not following them uh, yet uh, please consider uh, watching their their videos it's well worth the the watch and your time and uh, you can only learn there's that's the point uh, Kerry is a uh, younger turner like me and um, I mean just he, he does great great stuff and uh, 
and uh, he has the lead which is actually one of my dream leads the VL240 so uh, perhaps one day I'll achieve that uh, goal and uh, get that lead here and um, he has a uh, I believe a few weeks old video uh, four ways to remount the ball on the lead and you'll see uh, the one that Richard Raffen taught me um, how to reverse a ball uh, to refinish it and uh, he he shows that and uh, you can see in his video how strong of a uh, remounting is so it's a great great uh, content and I really recommend carry um, other wood runners that I really recommend um, are not maybe so uh, constantly on YouTube but are uh, masters in this craft and um, that is uh, Glenn Lucas he has excellent uh, YouTube video uh, YouTube channel and uh, he has uh, DVDs and download versions of uh, each of his um, let's say content like uh, products uh, salad bowls, platters, and stuff like that. Um, excellent, excellent. Uh, Turner, just mastering in, in this craft. Uh, the other one, uh, Mike Mahoney. Uh, you probably all know Mike Mahoney. Um, excellent wood turner. He is, uh, I believe, a lifetime member now of AW. And... Um, just a great human being being and uh, just a great human and uh, he was extremely helpful when I started turning balls uh, his advice and uh, everything just he has a few videos on, on YouTube but he has a lot of um, DVDs or download downloadable downloadable versions as well on his website and uh, these are well well worth watching so um, like I said there is no one single way to do this and uh, that's why I'm like uh, mentioning these channels because maybe this style of wood turning doesn't suit you but maybe from Mike Mahoney, Glenn Lucas or um, Kerry or uh, one of them maybe suits a bit better and uh, you can try that out so uh, these are the the channels that i really recommend uh, if you want to watch uh, quality content um, and uh, now i forgot to mention there are a few wood turners on uh, on youtube that have uh, from the demo clubs uh, like demonstrations that are well worth watching there are just pure knowledge and uh, someone like Stuart Barry um, like, we gotta use this stick uh, there are a few videos of Ray Key on uh, making boxes um, then uh, Alan Barry he's uh, Stuart dad um, I mean there are few uh, well worth watching videos uh, that of Waterners that don't have their own uh, YouTube channel so like I said well worth watching and uh, uh, someone like uh, Jimmy Clues uh, also great Waterner so it's common sense as I always says said um, especially if you're going to copy somebody uh, pay attention on who you're actually copying and uh, and um, yeah that would be my take on uh, wood turners on YouTube so what five tools would I uh, if I only have five tools what uh, those would be and uh, why so after a little bit of thinking um, so my first of the five would be a uh, half inch uh, ball gouge uh, this is half inch diameter uh, ball gouge mine is uh, 
asymmetric grind as you can see so with this one you can pretty much do bowls uh, depend on the bevel here at the nose um, you can hollow it pretty much it depends obviously on the shape of the bowl uh, but you can start from start to finish uh, make a bowl uh, using just this gouge uh, the other tool uh, which I really like is this is 10 mil uh, spindle gouge uh, this has a long uh, bevel at the nose and uh, you can see the wings these are pretty much symmetrical doesn't have to be asymmetric uh, but the longer wing he uh, bevel here allows me to make uh, details and uh, get into weird corners uh, uh, let's say here so excellent for details and uh, uh, on a spindle uh, work as well obviously so uh, now for the for the skew which is the the subject of this video pretty much um, I would recommend uh, maybe uh, 20 mil wide this is 25 but uh, since I got it as a gift uh, from uh, Brandon um, this is actually one of my favorite tools and uh, when I use uh, when I make some spindles I just grab this and uh, pretty much do everything with with this one and uh, it's a great tool and uh, like I said I would if you're going to use a skew on a cross grain use it as a scraper uh, that will be uh, something like negative rake scraper don't use it as a on a bowls uh, as a bevel contact for instance if this was spinning like this and uh, this is how you would approach on a spindle and if you do this here and you have a catch it could be a really nasty catch and uh, nothing good can happen from that that's at least my opinion on, the, on this and uh, perhaps there is someone out there who uses like that but like I said this is close very very close to having a big catch and it's just not worth it since we have all these other options to smooth and get clean cuts on cross grain work for the spindle work this is tremendously uh, excellent tool uh, I'm not sure if that two words actually go together but um, uh, just excellent tool and uh, I really love to using it and it's well worth to uh, invest your time to master it um, don't be afraid of catches on spindle with the skew because usually they just mess up your work there is a video in beginner series that I did uh, with the skew so you can see the catch in uh, in real time and uh, you can see that nothing uh, almost nothing can happen on, uh, apart from ruining the wood so uh, the fourth tool would be a scraper and scraper or something like this um, maybe a bit wider uh, this is 12 mil uh, I would maybe go for uh, uh, three quarters of an inch 19 mil something like that uh, making grooves um, also for details uh, can be done just a great tool to have uh, in your arsenal so and uh, finally uh, one of these scrapers uh, if I only have one I would probably sharpen it and profile it uh, to this profile because this I can use on the smaller boxes uh, this is one inch wide uh, you don't have to use uh, if you only have one of these scrapers don't buy this 10 mil uh, thick it's too heavy uh, too big of a scraper uh, go for 8 mil or 6 mil that should get uh, the job done uh, maybe for 8 mil uh, because you might use this for a bottom of the bowls or uh, maybe even extend it a little bit past the tool rest uh, so like I said this profile uh, helps me out if I only have one of these scrapers uh, so I can make uh, uh, curved bottom uh, boxes 
uh, or if you leave it slightly like this uh, straight you can use this portion to flatten the bottoms of the bowls and uh, it's just a well versatile tool and um, this straight here actually can use as a shear scraper flat you can get into corners a little bit not like uh, really angled corners but a little bit into corner should be should get the job done and you can use it as a shear scraper uh, either using this portion or this portion but do not go to the uh, flat side here so those would be the five tools that if I only have five or if I'm just starting out and uh, um, I have the budget to buy five tools I would highly recommend to, to go for this option uh, because you can do pretty much everything with this so you can go from boxes on spindle work uh, bowls on a cross grain work so these tools these five would pretty much do everything that you need so um, yeah uh, see you in the next video